So this fourth problem in unit four is about a particle moving along the x-axis. These were super, super popular in general um, before on the tests. Uh, so I, I think they'll find a way to put it on there. But like I said, with only two questions, I, have, I really don't know um, what they're going to do. But this one, um, x of t is the position function. And so it shows you the position on the x-axis. So a negative value for x of t is going to be its position on the left at that time. A positive value is going to be the particle be positioned on the right. Um, so if we want to know where the particle is at two seconds or whatever. Wait, it's time. It's, it doesn't tell you what time is in. But anyway, you put two in and if it's positive, it's on the right. If it's negative, it's on the left. Okay, so for a, we want to show that the velocity of the function um, at time t is given by v of t 70t over the quantity 3t squared plus a over, or quantity squared. Um, so if we have the position function and we want to find the velocity function, we're going to find the derivative. So v of t is equal to the derivative of the velocity function. So let's find the derivative of x. So we're going to do the quotient rule. So we'll do low d high minus high d low over low squared. Now, they give it to you like this, so you, you do end up simplifying it. This is technically uh, an equation for the velocity function, but they, they're telling us they want us to put it in simplest form. So we will do that by the distributive property. So the t cubes cancel out. Whoops, that should have been 54, not just 5. And then when I add 16t and 54t, that gives us our 70t like we needed to get. Okay, then the next question. We want to know, is the particle moving... Um, toward the origin or away from the origin at time t equals 2. So there's two things we need to know. We need to know which direction the particle is moving, and we need to know the position of the particle. And you can find them in any order that you want to. But the position is going to come from the position function. And then the direction <coughs> is going to come from the velocity function. So a positive direction is going to be the particle is moving to the right, a negative um, velocity, the particle is moving to the left. All right, so this is not hard. We just take, for x of 2, we just take 2 and we plug it in for our t. Now, this is meant to be a non-calculator question, and so um, on a non-calculator question, you really just wouldn't want to write down what this is, either positive or negative. You can figure that out super fast. But because we can use a calculator, we can simplify it down. We would just get negative one fourth for the position. So that means that the particle is going to be um, point four, or is going to be one fourth of a unit away from zero. So on the left side. <coughs> All right, then the position function we just found, and they actually gave it to us, which was nice. So we can know for sure we'll get this right. We know what function we're really supposed to use. And again, um, this was a non-calculator question, but you guys are going to be able to use a calculator. So um, before, we just worry about if it's positive or negative, but we can actually write down the value of it. So this means that the particle is moving to the right. So the particle is moving toward the origin. So we have to write all of these things out in words. Um, so we can't just like draw a picture and be done. And we can't just do the math and be done. We have to explain it. 
So because x of 2 is less than 0, or you could say because x of 2 is negative, whatever you want, <clears throat> the particle is positioned to the left of the origin. All right, and then we have to give a statement about the velocity. So because v of 2 is greater than 0, the particle oops, is moving to the right. equals 2. We actually need to say that up here also. Okay. Therefore, the particle is moving at time <clears throat> t equals 2. Okay, I kind of like that question. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, and then the C part asks us, asks us about the acceleration. So the acceleration of the particle is given by a of t. We're going to write an expression for a of t, and we're going to find the value of a of 2. So a of t is equal to the derivative of v of t. And we know what the derivative, or we know what v of t is, because we found it, we verified it, and it was given to us in part a. So I'm just going to jot it down, because it's hard for me to talk about it when I can't see it. Okay, so now I would do the quotient rule again. <clears throat> so we are going to do low d high minus high. And then when we do the derivative of low, we have to be really careful. We do the chain rule. So we're going to multiply by 2. Leave the inside alone, take one away from the power, <clears throat> and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. And then that is over low squared. And we square something being squared, it's raised to the fourth. Right, and from what I read when I was reading the rubric, you could stop here on this. Um, that you get a point to if you do um, the quotient rule, and then you get a point for doing the chain rule, and then that's it. So now when I put in two, <clears throat> I can just use the calculator, but you are going to want to write down what you're doing. you can use the calculator they may ask you to give the <clears throat> uh, like the cleaned up answer <clears throat> right, and don't forget that you can use you are going to have a calculator and um if you need to find v prime of t or v prime of 2 to check yourself you can type that in the calculator All 
right, and then for D, what position does the particle approach as T approaches infinity? So when it's asking you questions like this, they're asking you to do the limit as T approaches infinity of X of T. All right, and we can do that. Um, it looks like we're gonna use good old Loki tall again. All right, so when I put infinity in for t and square and subtract 9, I get infinity. If I put infinity in for t squared multiplied by 3 and add 8 to it, I get infinity again. So that means I can use L'Hopital. So we would just find the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. Right. And again, if I put in infinity for our t's, we get infinity over infinity. So I can do L'Hopital's rule again. So the derivative of the numerator is 2, the derm der derivative of the denominator is 6, and that's going to simplify to 1 third. So what that means is the particle approaches x equals 1 third as t approaches infinity. So it's important you understand what that one third is, is because x is talking about the position. So, and the position is the position, position on the x-axis. So that's where the particle is approaching on the x-axis as the time is approaching.